Hello everyone and welcome to our A to J Author New User Training. This is Jessica with the Center for Access to Justice and Technology. Before we get started today, um, you all are on mute. If you'd like to ask a question, please raise your hand or put your question in the question box. And if you're calling in today by phone, um, please enter your audio pin to be heard. This session is being recorded and will be put on our A to J Author YouTube channel um, this afternoon. So today's topic is multiple choice and checkboxes. So on the agenda, we have um, eight things. What are multiple choice variables? Setting up a multiple choice variable in A to J author. How that works with hot docs. And then what are checkboxes, if not multiple choice questions. Setting up checkboxes in A to J author, A to J author and hot docs. Um, in regards to checkboxes, buttons as an option, and additional resources. So what are multiple choice variables? Multiple choice variables are used to collect a single value from a set of options. They are presented to the end user as either radio buttons or a drop-down text list. And the multiple choice variable type is automatic, automatically assigned to radio buttons and to text pick from a list fields by A to J author. Multiple choice questions seek a single answer from the end user. I'm going to repeat that a couple of times because that makes up the big difference um, between multiple choice and checkboxes. Multiple choice seeks a single answer from the end user and only one option can be selected. A couple of things to keep in mind. The number picked from a list, I just mentioned that text picked from a list is a multiple choice vari variable, but number picked from a list is not a multiple choice variable. While number pick from a list presents end users with a set of options, typically you're going to want to do something with the value that is collected from a number pick from list, uh, use it in a calculation perhaps. So you want to keep it as a number variable, not a multiple choice variable. You can always check the type of variable you have by going to the variables tab within the main A to J author authoring screen and as you can see in this third column here, type is shown. You can also, from this, double click on the variable and you can change the type if it, if it did come up multiple choice and you wanted a number. So again, number, pick from a list, keep it as a number, not a multiple choice. This is the kind of thing when you're asking how many children do you have, the end user says three, you then use that number um, to evaluate in a repeat loop how many times they've gone through the loop of questions about their children and to see if they've hit what they've said their number of children was. So how many iterations of the loop have they gone through? How to set up a multiple choice question. So I mentioned there's two kinds, radio buttons and uh, text pick from a list. So to set up a radio button, right here the back screen on the left is our main question design window and I'm on the Fields tab, we'll go into the software later, so um, if you're a little lost, don't worry. This is the Fields tab. The type is radio button. The label is what is displayed to the end user, so here it says U.S. Citizen. The variable is the one multiple choice variable that's going to hold the one value chosen by the end user. So the variable is the same among all the fields. Um, the variable is citizenship status MC, and the default value is what's going to be passed to hot docs, um, or passed on to um, the next step in this process, uh, and that's a citizen. So your label and your default value, value do not have to be the same thing. The label is what the end user sees, the default value is ultimately what is passed to hot docs. For a drop-down list, it's kind of the same thing, except that we only have one field. In the last one, I had three fields, same variable. In a drop-down list, I have only one field with a customized list. So the type is text, pick from list. The label, again, is what is shown to the end user. The variable is marital status MC here. And customized list, you can see Right here, customize list is clicked, and a blank box opens up, and I can type in whatever I'd like here. And whatever I type in this box, hit OK, will be shown to the end user. OK, 
case. So this is also, this might look familiar for um, if you are using it for a state. This, when you're asking for an address, state is a text pick from list type of question. And there, generally, people use the second option instead of customized list, but list from external file, and they use the US state XML file that's included in our A to J Author Starter Kit. If you aren't familiar with this, you can find our A to J Author Starter Kit on a to jauthor.org. The key to creating multiple choice questions in A to J Author is to create one variable. I know I'm beating a dead horse here, but one variable for the setup to which the set of options correspond. Each option has a unique value, so that the label is unique and the default value is unique. And when the end user selects that, that value, that default value is passed on to HopDocs. So same variable, you can see both US citizen and permanent legal resident have the same variable, citizenship status MC but different default values are being passed to hot docs when the end user selects that option. So let's go to A to J author and look at an example here. So I created a simple um, A to J guided interview here. And here we can see the example, the question of the citizenship status. This is a radio buttons question. So I have here a macro that is just displaying what the end user has put in for the variable client first name, TE. And I'm asking, what is your citizenship status? So we go to fields. And you can see here that I have three distinct fields, US citizen, permanent legal resident, and other. But in each one of these fields, the variable citizenship status MC is exactly the same. So you can see permanent resident, still citizenship status MC, and other, still citizenship status MC. All that's changing is the label and the default value. So here, here, and again, all that's changing is here. And this is especially noticeable, the difference between a label and a default value. All I'm asking the end user is that they are uh, a citizen, a permanent legal resident, or something else, the other. But in hot docs, the, the question might be structured in a way that you need the phrase, uh, neither a citizen nor a permanent legal resident. All right, so let's check out a drop-down list. So here is the question about marital status. Um, what is your marital status? This is a field, so this is a drop down, uh, pick from a list. So the option is text pick from a list. It just has one field. I just have one variable. And I have customized list selected. So I have my options here. I can change it to something very Facebook-like. It's complicated. And this would um, pop up then for my end user. But again, only one option is able to be selected. So what is your marital status? I can only select one option. Continue. All right, so let's go back to our PowerPoint here. So A to J author, uh, multiple choice, and hot docs, multiple choice. In A to J author and hot docs, you should always have the same variable type. It's very important that your variables, obviously, otherwise they, the information will pass. Your variables need to be the same in hot dogs as they are in A to J author. So with that, multiple choice in hot dogs also um, is selected and gives the end user one option to select. They can only have one option. You can see here that I have the variable marital status MC, or citizenship status MC, and it is checking it. So if citizenship status MC, this is a variable, equals a citizen, which was the default value that I brought over from A to J. I want, a to, I want hot dogs to check this box. If not, I want them to leave the box blank and move on to the next if statement, which would be if permanent legal resident is the value that comes over from A to J, check this, this box. If neither citizen nor permanent legal resident comes over, check other. And where, um, whether hot docs is an RTF or a PDF, the variable type is still multiple choice. With the RTF, 
multiple choice is used in an if statement, which was an example on the last screen here. It's an if statement. And you're telling it to determine whether to display a checkbox or a blank box. With the PDF, you use the hotdocs automator function to group all of the options and kind of create a table where then it can select the correct um, possible value. All right, so what is a checkbox if it's not multiple choice? A checkbox is basically a set of true-false variables. Each separate field is a true-false variable. It um, allows the end users to select more than one option, where again, multiple choice is only one option, one ultimate value. Checkboxes can hold multiple values, because each question, each is your legal issue landlord tenant, is your legal issue mortgage foreclosure, is your legal issue government benefit, or unemployment is a yes, no, true, false. Um, so in mobile, this is a mock-up of what our checkboxes will look like in our A to J Author 5 mobile version. On the left, you can see um, a mock-up of what a checkbox screen would look like if we didn't make any changes in the mobile version. So the big fat ghost finger can't correctly click the right button. They are, it's too big. The fingers are too big. If you think of your iPhone or your Android phone, your Blackberry, it's hard to get exactly precise pointing. So we realized that because checkboxes are simply a series of true, false, yes, no questions, we should break them up that way because the big green and red box is much easier to, check, to click on than the tiny little specific box next to the word job or social security, that kind of thing. So in the middle screen, we've broken it up so you can see that, that this is essentially just a series of true, false questions. So what types of income do you have? Do you have a job? Yes or no? Whatever they select, they switch to the next one. Do you have Social Security? Yes or no. Veterans benefits? Yes or no. Alimony? Yes or no. Stock dividends? Yes or no. And at the end, the end user will be able to see what they've selected, since they couldn't see it all uh, going along all the way, all the options. And they'll either be able to swipe back to change it, to go back through the yes or no questions, or swipe forward to proceed. Setting up a checkbox. The type is checkbox, and you have a different variable for each option. So the type is always checkbox, the label is whatever you want to display to the end user, and the variable is a unique variable for each option. So the variable for the landlord-tenant question is, for the landlord-tenant option, is legal issue landlord true-false, where from mortgage foreclosure it would be legal issue foreclosure true-false. Remember. And they have distinct variables for each one. And setting it up, the key to set up to creating checkbox questions in A to J Author is to create multiple true-false variables to each, which each option corresponds. Remember, each option, its own true-false variable. Multiple choice, only one variable for all the fields. So let's go into the software to look and see. Here's the question, what is your legal option? Check all that apply on like a radio button, which would be just one. We go into the fields tab, and I have my first option. Are they having a landlord tenant issue? My unique variable of legal issue landlord true false, or mortgage foreclosure, or government benefits, or employment. So my label is changing, and my variable is changing. And what's being passed to hot docs is a simple true or false for this specific variable. The label is not passing simply the true false. Let's go back to our PowerPoint. Oop. I went to the wrong slide. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. Similar to um, multiple choice in hot docs, you again have to have the same variable type. It has to be a true false variable in A to J author and a true false variable in hot docs. The value true or false is passed, and you can see here it's an if statement. If the legal if the variable legal issue landlord true false is true, so it comes through, 
click this, else leave a blank. This is true, click this, click else leave a blank, and so forth. So with um, hot dogs and angiopathy, you would think multiple choice would mean multiple options. However, the term is checkboxes. So multiple options, checkboxes, single option, multiple choice. It's kind of a confusing naming, but anyway. The difference, again, between the RTF and the PDF in hot dogs, you use in RTF if statements, whether to display the box as checked or display a blank box. And in the PDF, you use the hot dogs automator function to click the box and identify which of is the appropriate variable to use there. The final option for um, doing a checkbox is to have it as a button. It's the very simple yes or no. It's the simplest true-false question you can ask. So, again, one true-false variable is set up in A to J author. When the button is selected, that the associated value either comes through as true or false. Are you over 18? Yes, it goes through as true. No, it goes through as false. To set it up, we're on the Buttons tab now. So we were in the Fields tab before. We are on the Buttons tab um, in the question itself. The label, as always, is what is displayed to the end user. It's always changed. You can always change it. The variable is a single variable, true or false, for each button. So the button, you can have up to three. So they'll all have the same variable, which is here is over 18. TF, which is the moniker for true-false, and the value that you want to go through is true or false. Um, a true-false variable, a button works the same in hot dogs as in other, any other true-false variable. So it's the same if statements and whether they have the checked box or not the checked box. Additional resources. So we have our A to J authoring guide, which is available on our website. For right now, Chapter 5 deals, deals with variables. So what are multiple choice variables, a chart of variable types, and what they do. And Chapter 7 deals with creating questions. So are the pages here of um, text pick from the list and radio button. Um, Coming up, we have, as you know, our new user workshop is every month, and we have a selected topic, and our A to J author advanced user forms are every other month. Our next one will be in May, and it's the third Thursday of each month. Once you sign up for the new user trainings, you're signed up for all of them, but if you do want to attend the advanced user forums, um, you need to sign up for those independently, and the link can be found on our website. It's probably a good idea if this is not your first week or month of doing this to come to our advanced user forums. You don't have to have been doing it for five years to be an advanced user. Um, last In March, we talked about um, nested repeat loops, which is up on our A to J author YouTube channel if you want to see it. But the topics aren't necessarily beyond what you would ever encounter as a new user. So it might be helpful to just come and listen. Are there any questions? If you do have a question, feel free to raise your hand. We can go back um, through anything. Or if you don't um, have a microphone today, you can always type your question in the question box. OK. Um, I'm not seeing any, so a big thanks to Callie for providing us with this go-to meeting service. And if you do think of any questions later, I am always available. Here is my email, um, and I will see you all next month. Thank you.